I cannot imagine being a mother and living here and having my baby sit on the ground, no food. It's just like death walked in. And when there's no food, of course, there's no hope. We're seeing these just typical Haitian families, no food, no job, no house, and in a destitute situation. Uh, really, it's been a bad situation. It's been a very, very bad. I pray God to give water soon to the area. God give us some rain. We came here to the village of Kotim today, Sher and I. We heard that two or three families have ran out of food ahead of time. We feed this village once a month for an entire month, but we heard some heard of some families are running out of food, so we came to check it out. I cannot believe what I seen. Sherry couldn't believe it. You know, although we've been giving food once a month, they all come to the lake hunt in the village to pick their food up. I didn't realize how bad all these people were. Bonjour, Monsieur Omel. Okay. Bonjour. Bonjour, Madame. Femme Bonjour, Madame. 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 That's just room that's hey, just crowded. Hey, excuse me, Oh, look at the little children oh, yeah. inside. Okay. Look, oh, madam. Women come inside, babies. Madam, you go inside, Sha. Okay, I'm going to stay outside. Yeah, okay. This oh. woman right here is extremely malnourished. I, I just can't imagine what the rest of her children are like. So, uh, so, madam, est-ce que timo nu yute jamais majete? Your time I'm agite, ça bon. I said, are your children eating dirt? She said, no. I said, that's a good thing because a lot of children in Haiti, they eat dirt when they're hungry. Okay, pa kiti o majite, paske yu kamui, si yu fesa. But they are drinking the salt water. It seems to be what everybody here is doing when they're hungry, something to fill their stomach. So she's got two children here. This child right here is sick. And so, man, est-ce que vous êtes mon aléco la vie child? Oui, bien. Okay, that's good. She has children in the love child school. So that. Oh, okay. Okay. She's explaining to me that 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 those children don't have any books, so we're going to see that she gets some books. Okay. Um, et Mario, côté lui. Il parle. Il parle. Oui. Oh, he's trying to go down there and water the garden. That would be very, very hard work. Okay, ma'am, tout nanu do dormi la. Oui. Okay, all the whole family sleeps right here. Again, this is a family, it's just ex extremely need. So we're going to go ahead and give her a box of food today. So again, we're seeing these just typical Haitian families, no food, no hope, no job, no house and in a destitute situation. So we're gonna make sure that they get food right now. Okay, we're to Vinny avec your boîte mange pour vous, okay? Pour bien espoir, okay? Oui, merci. Okay, she said thank you so much. Joel. Haiti is the poorest country in the world. Every day, children are hungry and starving, which in many cases leads to death. These children have no hope. They have no desire for school, no strength to play, and no aspirations of a better future. You can help them change their situation by providing food because food brings hope. Will you get involved today? For your gift of $24, you will provide 648 meals of well-balanced, nutritionally rich, great-tasting food. Your gift of $120 provides 3,240 meals, 
and your generous gift of $1,000, which provides 27,000 meals, will feed an entire impoverished Haitian village. Please consider Haiti's hungry children today by calling the number on your screen, visiting our website, or sending in your gift today. We cannot do everything, but together we can do something. On behalf of the hungry children of Haiti, thank you and may God richly bless you. The sun was setting in the tiny village in the middle of nowhere, and soon it would be dark. Little Stefania Pierre stood in the doorway of her mud and stick hut, her little hands caked with thick oozing mud. She then turned around, went inside, and squatted on the dirt floor. With one hand she held the rim of a dirty metal bowl, and with the other she stirred the water and dirt mixture. It would soon be dark and there was much work for Stefania to do. Her mother had filled the cracks on the top of the stick walls with the mud mixture, and then she had to lie down. Stefania was to finish the bottom half of the stick walls with mud, filling in every crack she could reach. Stefania looked over at her mother lying on the mat, still sick with the fever, hands still filthy from another long day of mudding walls. Her little brother, Metzen, was sitting on the ground outside the one-room hut. Even though she knew he was probably eating dirt again, she was too weak and too tired to scold him. None of her family had eaten anything all day long. Now it was growing dark and it would be another long night with no food, and she knew hunger pains would keep her awake. Her mother taught her to sleep on her stomach so she would not feel the hunger pains as much. After her father died and since Stefania's mother had grown sick, she had to do many things that her mother had taught her. She could sweep the dirt floor of their hut and clean the inside as best she could. She could take care of the little brother Metzen, age three. She could carry heavy buckets of water from the lake for people in the village for a little money. She could do all of these things, but there was one thing she could not do. She could never just be a little four-year-old girl. Should I want to give you a special gift? Our new release book, Love is Something You Do. This book is full of stories of children here in Haiti, stories of faith, stories of adventure, and even back from our life in the beginning when she and I was born up to present day. And of course, the first chapter is called The Rat Shack. I fasted and prayed 21 days just on water. But about the 13th day, I looked up at one o'clock in the morning and I seen a vision. What did I see? You must request the book. For your free copy of Bobby and Sherry Burnett's new book, Love is Something You Do, Simply give your gift of any amount and request the book. Call the number on your screen, write to the address, or go to the website and give your gift now. Remember, to receive your free copy of Bobby and Cherry's new book, Love is Something You Do, simply give your gift of any amount and request the book. I believe Sherry's right here by this kai pie, which means hut. Uh, this is, I believe, Madame Noel's family. Uh, she's desperate for food, ran out of food early this month. We feed this village monthly, but people are running out of food because it's been so dry and people are desperate. Let me think, where is Sherry at? Sherry, is this Madame Noel's Yeah, pie? I haven't got up here, but I think this is it. Bonjour. Here. Bonjour. I tell bonjour. you, I look at all the children. Bonjour. Uh, Sherry, I stay out here. Oh, I think she's okay. sick. Oh, bonjour, Madame Noel? Ma'am Noel, Wait, come is she on, malade? Is she sick? What? Papa, oh, ma'am, she's sick. Here. Hey, sure, I just stay okay. here. Oh, she's sick, go. Sherry. Uh-oh. Oh, look at her children. Wow. Oh, my God, she's in terrible condition. Madam Noel? Oui. Madam Noel. Come on, yeah. Hmm? Oh, my lad? Keep problem again. Hmm? Qui côté? Les femmes. And all of her, Ogilafiev? 
Oh, okay, kushe, kushe, kushe. Wow, oh my gosh. Timon, is that say Timon Pao? We, oh my God, look at these kids. She's sick. She's got all her babies here. Wow, she can't even, even if she was up, she couldn't get over to, to make any kind of food for them at all. And she's very, very sick. We're gonna come back here immediately with the clinic. But this woman, she can't even move. Oh my. Oh God, touch your father in the name of Jesus, I pray, God. I don't have anything with me today, God. I don't have any medicine, Lord. God, give her a miracle, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God. Restore her, Father, in Jesus' name. Manuel, Madame Noel, Madame Sherry. Who called me Madame Sherry? Oui. Madame Noel, est-ce que nous t'es mangé aujourd'hui? Vous t'es mangé aujourd'hui? No? She has not eaten today, so I don't even know when she has eaten. Man, this is bad. I mean, this is worse than even, I think this is worse than the other place. Look at these little children here. Uh, wow, we're gonna have to get them some food really quick. I know that her husband um, was working in a garden, and of course, we told you the story about the gardens in these area, but this is critical. I mean, this is nothing in here. I mean, there's no food left over. There's no, I don't see any rice. I don't see anything in here in the way of food whatsoever. I mean, I'm gonna have to find somebody in the village to cook the food for her because she's sick. And um, I think there's like 10 people in this family. This, this is the worst I've ever seen in any village, my friend. I mean, I've seen these people in line when they come for food, but they told me there was three critical families here today. And I'm so glad that we came to see all three of them because this is just, I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine being a mother and living here and having my baby sit on the ground. No food, there's no activity going on here. It's just like death walked in. And when there's no food, of course, there's no hope. And, and the, the problem is that the distribution that's scheduled for all these people won't happen for a couple weeks because we do it once a month. But these are families that we heard about that are in critical need, and I could see that I'm so glad we came here today. And I want to thank every one of you who do care about the poor, who do help us with our feeding programs. But this is something that we have not rehearsed. We have not seen these people. We just, we just heard about them on this piece of paper. We came here today, Bobby and I, three families in horrific need. If you've ever thought about what God has done in your life and how blessed you are. Please don't shut up your bowels and compassion for these people. It is so critical. My heart aches. You're there, you're watching us, but you can turn the television off and you could say the problems are going away. But Bobby and I, we cannot, we can't turn this thing off because we live here every day. We can't turn off a ministry. We can't turn off the faces of all these people staring at us. Please, if you're watching this program today, let your heart be touched with compassion and there will be a way that you can help the poor at the end of the program to help us get food to these people. What if we wouldn't have come today? I don't know. Thank you so much for your help. Okay. Haiti is the poorest country in the world. Every day, children are hungry and starving, which in many cases leads to death. These children have no hope. They have no desire for school, no strength to play, and no aspirations of a better future. You can help them change their situation by providing food because food brings hope. Will you get involved today? For your gift of $24, you will provide 648 meals of well-balanced, nutritionally rich, great-tasting food. 
Your gift of $120 provides 3,240 meals, and your generous gift of $1,000, which provides 27,000 meals, will feed an entire impoverished Haitian village. Please consider Haiti's hungry children today by calling the number on your screen, visiting our website, or sending in your gift today. We cannot do everything, but together we can do something. On behalf of the hungry children of Haiti, thank you, and may God richly bless you. May God bless you. I want to give you a word from the mission field today. Here we are in Koten, Haiti, where Love Child has a school, a Christian school. And you know, before I minister to you today from the word I ask, I thought I would sit down to this segment and I asked for a chair in this village. Could I have a chair to sit on? And did you know nobody had it? They brought me one chair, it was so old, um, we couldn't use it. There was no chair around here to sit on in this village. So they, got, they brought me a bucket and put a pillow on the bucket. Isn't that something? But I want to read a scripture today. The scripture tells it all. It's in Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 27, 28. It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thy hand, to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give thee. And tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. In other words, they're saying, withhold not good from them when it's in the power of your hand to do it. Don't say to your neighbor or don't say to someone that's poor, well, go, go, go tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I will help you tomorrow. Uh, come again tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I will try to do something tomorrow. The Bible is saying we must help them today. In this program, these people, sure and I, have, we have lived here since 1991 in Haiti. And I am shocked what I've seen today in this village of Coten, how poor and desperate these people are. So we just can't say, well, go away tomorrow, I'm gonna to help you, or but it's in the power of my hand and in the power of your hand to help the poor of, peop uh, the poor of Haiti and especially the village of Coten and so many other villages that we give food to each month and so many thousands of people. We gave out over 13 million meals. God bless you. Let God use you. You're not watching this program by accident. Let God use you, whether it's here in Haiti. I hope you can help us here in Haiti, but whether it's in your neighborhood or whoever God leads you to, it's in the power of your hand to help someone that's poor. Do it. Let God use you. God bless you from Cote in Haiti. Should I want to give you a special gift? Our new release book, Love is Something You Do. This book is full of stories of children here in Haiti, stories of faith, stories of adventure, and even back from our life in the beginning when Sharon and I was born up to present day. And of course, the first chapter is called the rat shack. I fasted and prayed 21 days just on water. But about the 13th day, I looked up at one o'clock in the morning and I seen a vision. What did I see? You must request the book. For your free copy of Bobby and Sherry Burnett's new book, Love is Something You Do, simply give your gift of any amount and request the book. Call the number on your screen, write to the address or go to the website and give your gift now. Remember, to receive your free copy of Bobby and Cherry's new book, Love is Something You Do, simply give your gift of any amount and request the book. Unbelievably, this little brave girl was just four years old. 
It is so hard to imagine a little girl never having a toy, a doll, or someone to dress her up or help to bathe her, but now Stefania was a tiny adult. She could never be a child again. With no other adults to help her, she had to learn to make a living and survive, not only for herself, but for her mother and her small brother. Even though Stefania was just a little girl, she had to think like an adult. Today she knew she had to finish putting mud between the cracks in the stick walls because the rainy season was coming. Normally she would be out looking for sticks to gather and sell to others or carrying heavy loads of water from the lake so that she could buy a small can of rice or cornmeal for supper. Stefania looked at her hands. She looked at the mud in the metal bowl. She was so hungry and knew that her brother was hungry too. Life didn't seem fair to this brave little girl today. Later, as she finished up the last portion of the mud in the metal bowl and carefully squeezed it between the cracks in the stick wall, tears fell down her face. She put her head down on her knees, wrapped her arms around her legs, and cried silently. She got up and went out to get medicine and brought him in. Stefania, her sick mom, and her little brother all laid down on a mat on the dirt floor. Stefania hoped her mother's fever would be better by morning. She hoped she could find work selling sticks or carrying water for someone. As Stefania lay down on the mat next to her mother and brother, she stared up at the thatched roof ceiling of her hut as the night set in. She lay there in the darkness thinking, I wonder if there really is a God. I wonder what it would be like to have a full plate of food each day. I wonder what it would be like to go to sleep with a full belly. I wonder if anyone cares. When many little children would be thinking about going to school in the morning or putting on some clean clothes, Stefania was not. When many children would be thinking of toys or games or what they wanted to be in the future, Stefania wasn't thinking of these same things. Why? Because every single minute of every single day, she was consumed with thinking of one thing, and that one thing was food. Even when Stefania was putting the mud between the cracks of sticks in their hut, she was thinking of food and how hungry she was. While she was carrying the heavy five-gallon bucket of water on her head, Stefania was thinking about where to find food. The fear of not finding food to eat each day rules the life of every child and every parent in the country of Haiti. Well, we just came back in here just for a few moments before we left to see Madame Noel and her children. And, you know, Bobby and I were looking at her, and it just looks like she's just given up the will to live. I mean, she's not, she's not moved or anything, Bobby, since we've been here, and she's so sick. And I just can't imagine living in a place like this, even if you're well. Then compounded on top of that is the fact that if you were sick, and you just could lay on a, on a mat on the floor. You couldn't even get up to feed your children or your grandchildren. And then thirdly, if you had food. If you had food. But then Bobby and I were sitting here, we looked over in the corner, and somebody must have told her that we were gonna come here to see her today. And even though she didn't have any food, by faith, she put a little pot on the, on the sticks. It's got water in it, doesn't have a fire, and it's just sitting there waiting by faith. And so, thank God we were able to bring her food today. In fact, this box of food right here. But she's in very horrible condition. We are going to get her medical help, and we're going to get her medical help rapidly to save her life. We don't know if she's today. got tuberculosis or what, but one thing we know is she needs food and she needs help medically, and we're going to do that for her. You well, know, Sharon and I, I know, 
We have lived here since 1991 in Haiti. Uh, you know, you thought by now, Cheryl, our hearts would be hard for the poor. What well, you see every day, see every we day. see it so much, but we still cry. Our hearts are not hardened. These people, and especially the children, these children here, there's no happiness in their eyes. They're sad. And their mama will make sure she has medical help today, all that she needs. Now, all these people have sufficient food because they're running out of food every month. They're so dry. I've never seen Haiti so dry in my life. Yes. But you can help. You're not watching this program by accident. It's ordained of God. If it's in the power of thy hand to yes. help, yes, Jesus. withhold not good from them when it's in the power of your hand to help. Mm. I read that scripture today on the, on the ministry segment. Here's how you can help. Please write these figures down and pray. Twenty or eight dollars for a donation of eight dollars will feed 200, provide 216 meals for a donation of. $24, you can provide 648 meals. For a gift of $120, you can provide 3,240 meals for a gift of $120. For a gift of $500, you can provide 13,500 meals. For a gift of $1,000, you can provide 27,000 meals. This food is donated by Feed My Starving Children of Minneapolis to love a child. But we have to pay a, a see my tracker, a big 40 foot container, to leave Miami, go all the way up, pick up the food, drive it from Minneapolis back down to Miami, put it on a big ship, pay that for four or five days, then get through customs. All that costs us $10,000. But for $10,000, you can provide 270 thousand meals. The toll-free numbers on the screen, you may call and put on your credit card, give on your credit card. It will speed the process up. Please read the, just obey the Holy Spirit. Yes. Or you may give online. Go to your computer and give online. Or you may just write a check and put your offering, your gift in the mail to love a child is tax deductible. God will use you. And when you lay your head down on your pillow tonight, you will feel so good. You have helped someone. Sure, and I live here every day with these people. Please help. Please hear the cry of the poor. This is why Sure, and I live here in Haiti since July 1st. 1991. Please go to the phone. Let God use you today. God bless you. All the way from Coteen, Haiti.